Hey good folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel, Devs and Dice. This show is called Boxes of Shame, where I each week try to uh, paint up a miniature for D&D. And this week's miniature is a request from one of my dear subscribers, Mr. Andy Holmes. Andy had a bunch of Reaper minis and asked me if I owned some of them and could paint them. Luckily, I had the ghast, and of course I can, Andy. So without further ado, this week's miniature is someone who requires no introduction. Because it should be smelling the peculiar sensation of rotting flesh and death a mile away, aghast. Now I wanted to try to make this miniature look a little bit more like the, the concept art in the monster manual. As always, if you like what I do here, like, share, comment or subscribe. Let's see how I painted up this ghast. A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Alright good folks, this is the ghast from Reaper Miniatures. Now, I unfortunately did not have the Bones version, but in fact the Dark Heaven Legends version, which means that this is made of metal. And like all metal miniatures, there were some flash that needed to be removed. I also filed the bottom to make sure that I had a nice flat surface to bond with. Now, for the basing, I decided to go with some pine bark as a base. I'm using super glue and some activator to expedite the process. Now in order to get this pine bark onto the base, I decided to go with some baking soda and easy flowing super glue. Or bakpulver and superlim as we say in Swedish. Once these two components interact, they form an instant bond almost welding the base and pine bark to each other. Now since I had the baking soda out, I decided to use it to cover the seams on top. And this is what we have going so far. I wanted to incorporate that characteristic oversized tongue that the ghast has in the official concept art. So I sculpted one using some green stuff, which is a two-part epoxy putty. This was kind of finicky, but eventually I managed to get the tongue to a decent state. Hell, even Gene Simmons would be envious of that one. Now with the excess, there is always excess, I decided to sculpt a tombstone and a mushroom. The tombstone sort of fits the theme, and the mushroom, well, why the hell not? I attached the tombstone and mushroom using some baking soda and super glue. Once dry, I xenophil primed all of it, and yeah, it's looking kinda good so far. I added some grey blue and counter blue to the wet palette and essentially started sketching out some of those highlights, midtones and shadows. Here I'm going in with some thin layers of diluted paints to make sure I didn't sort of cover up any details. I'm trying my best to read the model to see where the highlights and shadows should be. And as you can see here, my glazes are quite thin. The highlights look way too bright, but it will dull down once it dries. Now for the tongue. I used some Screamer Pink. And in the process of painting the tongue, I decided that I wanted to introduce some warmth to the shadows. So I just made a quick glaze using the Screamer Pink and then I added it to the shadows to create some contrast.
and then back onto the highlights over and over until I was somewhat happy with it. I add some black paint in the eyebrows and in the eyeballs, which I will later add a dot to just to sort of indicate those sinister eyes. I used skeleton bone from Army Painter to paint in the teeth, well, the ones that are left. And here I'm just cleaning up some of uh, the tongue area that got some skeleton bone on it. Rhinox hide, Mournfang brown and Xandri dust were the colors I decided to use for the ghasts, well, loincloth I guess. I start with some Rhinox hide as the base layer, a very dark brown. Then I start laying in some mid-tones with Mournfang Brown. And finally, some Sandry Dust for those highlights. Looks something like this when the paint has dried. Now moving on to the base, I covered the entire thing with a good coating of a diluted Rhinox hide. The dilution helps it to get into every sort of crack and crevice. I'm also sort of stippling the tombstone to get some colors in there. Once I had a nice coat of Rhinox hide, I came in with some Mournfang brown to start defining some lighter areas. And I also added some black under the gas to indicate the shadow which he casts on the lands. And once everything is dry, I start with some overbrushing of grey onto the tombstone. And then I start dry brushing the base with two colors essentially from my wet palette. I do this just to get some variation. Sorry about the lack of focus in this shot, what you might see is that I just used some water and black paints as a wash on the tombstone and, well, actually on the entire basing. Here I am wet blending in some colors on the mushroom. I wanted to keep this kind of low key since I don't want to call attention to it. It's just a detail. And then to finalize thing, I add some tufts from Army Painter and Gamer's Grass. Let's have a look at the final result. Alright folk, that's it for this time. I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you thought the result was okay, and perhaps it even inspired you. If you have any thoughts, questions or comments, as always, please uh, drop a line in the comment section down below. Oh yeah, and if you like what I do here, you know the drill, like, share and subscribe, <laughs> you know, all of that good stuff. And for you who have watched through this video up until this point, here comes a little cultural present from me. A Swedish word of saying from old times. Ingen ko på isen. It literally means no cow on the ice. Now perhaps this makes no sense, but it's another way of saying, don't worry, chill out, relax, there's no danger. <laughs> All right. So with that, I want to thank you uh, again for your time. I hope you have an awesome day. Stay safe out there. Until next time.